Hello and welcome to the third edition of 12378s. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the program, uh, this show is about speaking in English and about everyone and anybody who speaks English in this wonderful region where we are in and where we live. Today I have um, some lovely guests on the plateau. Uh, hi, Joe. Welcome. Hi. Thank you Thank for you. being Thank here. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. Hi, Paula. Hi. It's really Thank nice you. to see you. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Welcome. Thank you. And last but not least, Tony. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's lovely to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so before we get going, we're going to try and find out a little bit more about all of us. So, Joe, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Uh, I know that one of your passions, one of your hobbies, is uh, being a tour guide for the Gardens of Versailles. And uh, I had the lovely pleasure of being able to go on your audio tour uh, this weekend. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about what it's like to be a tour guide, if you have a favorite statue, for example, mm -hmm. uh, but also just generally your story, where do you come from, um, what else do you do, and uh, how did you pick this evening? Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a, that's, that's a lot though, right there. Uh, my, um, <laughs> Uh, my ambition was to try to find a, a nice place um, that wasn't quite in Paris. Uh, when my wife uh, and I decided to move uh, here, uh, she put uh, some conditions on me. It has to have a garden, it has to have a fireplace, it has to not be in the zone uh, where there's like big uh, buildings and, and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, well, you know, me not knowing much about the, the Paris region uh, at the time, I had to go to try to, to find uh, this. And luckily I was able to find a Maison de Gardien um, that was just behind a big house in Le Vezinet. Uh, that's where we first moved uh, when, when, we, when we moved here. Uh, and then eventually I settled in another town in um, uh, the Eveline. So, um, it's just by, by luck, by somebody like uh, agreeing to our dossier, you know, to, um, to become uh, renters uh, that we uh, uh, came into the, uh, to the area. And uh, my wife got a, a great job uh, teaching French um, at a, a bilingual school uh, over in uh, St. Cloud. And what she does, this will maybe tie in uh, together, uh, what she does is uh, she uh, goes on uh, field trips uh, with her students. And one of the field trips that she would do every year would be to go to, to Versailles and, and the gardens. And so she was the one who first taught me about uh, all the, the different stories and the symbolism uh, that's uh, behind uh, the statues. And I, I just, I was fascinated by this and I wanted to find out uh, more. Um, and so when I um, started to do a couple of audio tours, I said this would make actually a great uh, audio tour because um, oftentimes people don't know what they're looking at. They don't know how to get from one place to another. You know, it's massive for the, the gardens over there. So um, I said, uh, can I take some of the information that you've taught me uh, about uh, Versailles and then sort of build on that uh, to make that uh, in, into a, uh, a great uh, tour? Uh, and uh, you know, she said uh, yes, and I did more research and ended up being like 90 minutes actually of, of audio uh, mm -hmm. uh, for that. So it's, it's, it's more than I uh, sort of bargained for, but there's, there's so much to talk about. Mm. No, no, of course. And uh, I mean, I know you also do uh, Père Lachaise. Yeah, so, uh, exactly. we were, we're thinking of playing a little extract of yours, kind of to see, tease into to what your, your audio tour could look like. Oh, great. Go past Madeleine Gukasov on your left and the tall monument to the family Kanyovenzev on your right. Our next host is the second on the left, just after the pine. Amadeo Modigliani was an Italian master sculptor and painter furiously active at the beginning of the last century. He liked to paint reclining nudes of beautiful young women. And who can blame him? Apparently, Parisian police, who closed his only solo exhibition on opening day due to obscenity. Hey, why the long face? Is it because angular figures are a distinctive feature of the works of Modigliani? Or is it because the artist died too soon from a degenerative disease at the age of 35, or because his young model and lover jumped from a fifth floor window to join him in the afterlife. Both are reunited under this stone. His is another incredibly tragic story of a starving artist who passed away before receiving the accolades and riches he deserved. Who else has both a sculpture and a painting among the top 10 most expensive auctions of each medium? Not Matisse not Picasso. Modigliani stands alone.
When you're ready, go back out to the main cobblestone road and continue walking downhill. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming to the show, Joe. Hi, it's Paula. Nice. Hi. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> um, so I know you have a common link with Joe. Mm -hmm. I know you guys uh, sometimes work together because you uh, organize uh, events for expats on the Zivlin. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. But uh, same, your parkour in life and uh, where are you originally from and how mm -hmm. did you end up uh, on the Zivlin? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the tour of uh, Joe's tour in, in Versailles is amazing. I have no opportunity yet to, uh, to visit the... the the Père Lachaise uh, tour. Mm -hmm. um, I have great uh, reviews uh, when we organize the, the, the tours in, in Versailles. Um, for the moment, I do uh, tours with expats. Um, later on, I will probably <laughs> uh, go to a further step and uh, do with uh, tourists because it's a very interesting uh, uh, place to, you know, to, to, to show the culture uh, in the history of France. Uh, what I like very much from the Tour from Joe is that is uh, the symbolism behind and is something that he brings new to, you know, to, 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 this, to this world. So it's very interesting. Um, so uh, I've uh, arrived, um, I left in Lisbon, so I arrived in France in 98. Uh, so I, I'm Portuguese, so I left Lisbon uh, to come to uh, not far from Versailles. Uh, and I love the region, uh, Evelyn. And uh, my friends, when I left from Lisbon, they said, well, well why are you not going to be in Paris? Why are you going to be in somewhere around Paris? And I said, yeah, because I've, I went there and I check it out and it's fun. So I'm going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I came first to see if it was okay to, to move. So um, then um, I travel and I lived uh, in different places. So I lived in US uh, and in Ireland and in UK also. And I'm back to Liz Evelyn again. I'm, I'm living close to Versailles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Yeah, I did enjoy a lot of that in the, the symbolism in, in Joe's uh, tour. What marked yeah. me the most was uh, one of the first statues we saw mm -hmm. together. Uh, the little girl holding up a mirror as the modern, <laughs> well, today it would be the modern day selfie. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's really nice to have history, in, but also in a humorous way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. But we'll mm -hmm. come, go, come back to that in the show when we talk about your book. Hi, Tony. Hello. Hi. Uh -huh. How are you? I am fine. Perfect. Thank you so much for coming. My and pleasure. Welcome, Paula. Uh, I know this is a hard one for you because you've lived in so many different places and you've had such an enriching life and done so much, but please, Tell us who you are, how did you get here, and where are you originally from? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I'm a father of three, uh, married, and uh, we live in Bougival, which is in Evelyn. Um, uh, I'm an expat uh, spouse, mm -hmm. um, uh, so we're here because of my, my wife's job. And uh, we live in Bougival because uh, the English-speaking schools are there. Uh, the, the British School of Paris is uh, just across the river in quasi sur -Seine. Um, uh, but prior to coming to, we came to Paris uh, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, 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 to France in the middle of the pandemic, and so it's been very difficult to, to adjust. Um, and being a, an expat spouse, that's um, sort of a job without description. Um, uh, so I spend most of my time now developing my j jazz guitar skills. And recently I did a short uh, film with some students from the, um, if I pronounce this correctly, Conservatoire Libre, Libre um, Cinéma de Francais. Um, and the feedback was very strong. So I'm taking a course in acting in English for the camera um, with Cor Florent. But um, essentially, behind all of that, I'm a qualified accountant um, <laughs> and a business strategist. I have worked 25 years in the UK. I went to school in the UK, in, in London. Um, eight years in Germany, um, six months in, in Prague, two years in America, in, in LA, and um, as an expat, uh, six years in Dubai and two years in, um, in France so far. So. Incredible. <laughs> I wonder how many languages do you speak? I speak a little bit of German. Um, my French is a embarrassing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, growing up in England, you know, 
we, mm-hmm. we speak one language. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think uh, it's incredible when we come to the continent, because I, I, I came to the continent in 2005 at the age of about 40. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's incredible how many people speak English almost as a first language. Mm-hmm. And uh, there must be something in the education system um, in France and, and in Germany. In, in, well, in, in the Netherlands, they have, they have to speak yeah, English, right? To, yeah. <laughs> no one's understand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, and we don't have that same, that same approach to, to language. No, of course. Um, mm-hmm. So I try. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and not be the, oh, the English person, yeah. they only speak English. <laughs> well, yeah. we all have a common point, is that we all lived in America. I myself lived uh, 12 years there. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to move on to our subjects. And um, we'll be talking a little bit about politics. But it's really important that uh, we understand that we're just here to, to uh, understand each other's opinions and concerns and thoughts. So uh, we're not here to do anything or say anything we don't, we don't want to say. <clears throat> uh, so we have a few subjects. We'll be starting off with the legislations because uh, that is what happened this weekend and it's a pretty big deal, almost as big as the presidential elections. Uh, but also talking about you know, American politics versus French and uh, English politics and also maybe compare a little bit the mentalities between these countries. Um, and if we have time, we'll move on to COVID-19. It's been about two years now since uh, our first lockdown was lifted. Mm-hmm. So are we still worried? How do we feel about it? Um, we'll see. Mm-hmm. And as a last topic, we're going to talk about our favorite jazz songs mm-hmm. <laughs> and also uh, maybe the difference between French and American music because I know that uh, Tony and Joe are big uh, jazz fans. Paula, you mentioned you like it too. Mm-hmm. Tony, you, you play the jazz guitar. Um, and it's almost fed to the music, so it's a nice, uh, fun way to end the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, the first rounds of legislations uh, were this Sunday. Here in Guillaume-Cour, uh, which is the first uh, circonscription of the Zivlin, we have a majority win for Emmanuel Macron's party, uh, Ensemble. Macron's party had a 33,0% uh, turnout rate, and close behind is Noop. Mm-hmm. which is the Ecology and Social Party at 24,49%. So a general question I just want to start off with is, where did you guys vote if you voted? Um, how come? If not, why? And uh, is voting important to us? Is it something we think about? Or, you know, it, it depends. It's just, any thoughts? Mm-hmm. I only just got my card Vitel. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. It's taken almost two years, so um, uh, getting registering for voters is, is just a, another complexity. But how about you guys? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's very important to vote. Um, I think uh, in these elections there was not much debate because of you know the worldwide uh, situation. Um, I think it's very important to go to vote, um, and foreigners can vote, so uh, mm-hmm. it's important to participate. Um, I think the French like uh, debate, and I think there was not much debate uh, also for these uh, for this uh, weekend. I think it's because of Ukraine and but the situation. Also so so quick after the presidential election. Yes, also again, but yeah. I think there was not a lot of no show ups. I think the percentage is high, so I think it's a shame that people don't uh, don't participate. But uh, because it's it's very important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Joe, any thoughts? Or, um, well, I have a lot of uh, thoughts uh, about, uh, about this, but uh, it's mainly that um, I, I think, uh, almost like, like Paula, that, uh, that we just had two elections, and it's almost like we didn't have uh, two elections. There wasn't a lot of debate. There mm-hmm. wasn't a lot of uh, discussion uh, prior to. And so it's almost like for this last election, which I, I did vote uh, in because um, I now have... Um, uh, dual citizenship and able to, to vote here. Mm-hmm. Um, I I really had a tough time um, finding out mm-hmm. what uh, the candidates or, or or the parties were uh, were all about. And a lot of these parties are, are new, so um, it 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 seems to me, and I think this is um, this is unfortunate that it's almost all, all around the cult of personality 
of the leader of, mm -hmm. of the of the party or, or of the president uh, who's uh, who's sitting. You either like the personality of the person or, or you or you don't. And I th I think it should be about the issues. Mm -hmm. I think it should be about uh, you know what uh, what should we change? Are you for this? Are you for uh, for that? And I I didn't hear a lot of. Um, a dialogue about that. Do you mm -hmm. think again, uh, um, because I think the presidential elections have always been about personalities mm. in, in France with uh, um, Mitterrand and, 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 and so on, um, but having it so close to the legislative uh, elections yeah. then puts more emphasis on that. Mm. You know? um, but I didn't vote, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, and Joe, in our discussions, um, We've talked about maybe the France being more skewed to the left. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts and opinions about that? Or it's more a socialist. Uh, okay. Historically, uh, it's an histor more socialist uh, uh, when you see about the system, security, social, and all is to protect uh, people. So it's completely different from UK and from from Britain from from, yeah. from, from, yeah. from Britain. So. Uh, I think it's a different system also because the president in France has more power than, for instance, in Portugal. Uh, Portugal, the president has a more representative role. Mm -hmm. There's not much power. It's the prime minister who has more power. And uh, is not, uh, the president is not coming out on uh, weekend all, all day long on TV talking about all subjects. I mean, the president talks about some subjects, but there's not, the prime minister needs to, to come out with uh, explanations about uh, what they are you know, uh, voting uh, and uh, it to explain the, the people what uh, is going on in the government. It's not as in France, the uh, president is the main figure and uh, he's talking about everything, about uh, COVID security issues in the country, mm -hmm. everything international role. Um, so it's a, li a little bit different. Uh, in UK is even oh. it's completely confusing. different. Very confusing. Uh, confusing uh, in yeah, US so. is different, but yeah. what happened is that people don't identify with left and right wing mm -hmm. anymore. And we've seen that uh, either they don't go to vote or they go to extremes. Yeah, so mm. extreme mm. left or extreme right mm. because they don't identify with uh, just right and left and or being in the middle. Uh, I think they go to the extremes and that is all over the world, I think. I mean, I don't know about Asia because it's a bit different from, from what uh, Europe or US or UK mm -hmm. is, but um, that's what I think we are seeing in Europe. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you think that has to do with the fact that France is considered more of a semi-presidential political system compared to America, which is clearly a, a presidential mm -hmm. political mm -hmm. system? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I, I think so. And Tony, what about the UK? Do you think um, in comparison with, with France or, well, uh, yes, or with the France, US? Uh, I'm just totally confused. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no. um, because no, uh, I've, I've come to... Um, France a lot, mm -hmm. you know, living in, in Germany for eight years, I come to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, actually, in fact, I met my wife here. Right, um, uh, uh, but I never got involved in, in, in the politics. And uh, living here now and uh, seeing the exposure mm -hmm. of Macron and not knowing who the prime minister is, mm -hmm. it's very confusing mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for someone like me who is um, used to no, not only a prime minister but a parliament and the parliament making mm -hmm. the exactly. holding the prime minister to account right and uh, a queen with uh, quiet and uh, confidential briefings with the with the prime minister so it's it's uh, alien american politics <laughs> who doesn't know about american politics yeah. it's in the news you know it's, it's so. amazing and it's uh, so well covered here that uh, that actually i don't even need to read the the us uh, papers to, to yeah. know what's happening in the in the us uh, because uh, in mm -hmm. france is uh, very um, interested in and what's happening um, and uh, very knowledgeable uh, mm -hmm. Well, for sure, I can say that I, I think in all, all of the politics, there's always something that's going on. I mean, in France, we just got a, a, well, a new leader. We just did our elections. Our, our president is still Emmanuel Macron, but I mean, that's huge what's going on for us. Now in the UK, uh, Boris Johnson um, just survived a no-confidence vote. And uh, in America, Trump started the Capitol uh, hearings. Mm -hmm. So, But it's, it's, a, it's extremely interesting how... All the politics, uh, it's always something going on, but it, I think it's the system that creates these like real differences and also the mentality. Mm -hmm. And history. also the mentality of the country. And history mm -hmm. as well. And history mm -hmm. as well, because absolutely. We, we spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. there's now a big debate 
or, or big outcry with uh, Britain's position with the EU deal on the Northern Ireland yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. And um, that is just as almost a taboo subject as, as other issues in, in, in Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's uh, whatever you say, you defend <coughs> one side or the other. Um, and uh, yeah, we don't know how it's going to resolve. It's historically because Britain are in, in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. And uh, some people have made themselves Irish and, mm -hmm. and uh, want to be identified as Irish, but also want to be identified as British. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. just historically, mm -hmm. these things just roll out over time. And this is our time. And if we can do something about it peacefully, then mm -hmm. uh, there's the opportunity. But uh, over time, I think it'll resolve, mm -hmm. we hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, speaking about nationalities, actually, um, yeah, I personally consider myself very lucky because even though I'm only French, I always felt American. And Paula, you know, we were talking about mm -hmm. how we both identify more as mm -hmm. uh, UK English, uh, mm -hmm. for sure. But I am lucky to call both of them home. And uh, and a quote I really like, uh, it's a bit cheesy, but I, but I think it's very... Uh, W worth putting out there is a quote by uh, Gertrude Strine, and it's uh, "America is my country, but Paris is my hometown." And uh, yeah. Yeah. I think Paris is everybody's hometown. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so romantic yeah, and yeah. so nice. Yes. Yeah. 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 The yeah. city in the world. Yeah. 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 Oh. But it's uh, there's uh, different differences between you know um, the, the the different uh, French and English, and being uh, working in different teams. Uh, because I work uh, in sales with different teams from for different markets, um, so I work with uh, you know the German team and the British team, and uh, South uh, Europe is a little bit cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Italian is completely different and cooler, and uh, um, and I learn um, you know there were some stereotypes, but I learned that some stereotypes are. True, <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, myself, um, I grow up, uh, you know, with uh, I'm Portuguese, so I grow up with, you know, this uh, strong um, liaison with with the British because mm -hmm. historically is the even uh, the oldest uh, diplomatic uh, treat, uh, um, agreement in the world. So uh, because of the geographic uh, uh, situation from Portugal, we are always uh, been alias with uh, with the British, um, but I. I think uh, we're talking about mentality and different people, cultural. Um, I think I identify uh, much with the UK or the US, uh, more practical way of doing things, uh, less assisted. Uh, from you know from 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 the from the state. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we say state uh, l'état mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I think uh, probably uh, we were more uh, growing up on you know uh, uh, without uh, uh, less help from the others and like mm. um, working and getting some. Uh, rewards from our work, and I, I think uh, this mentality is more in the UK and the, in the US. Um, in the US, I discovered volunteer because I did a lot of volunteer there. I was not working. Um, how people help, uh, you know, when other families or there's a, a cause they want to help. Um, I can see that more in 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 UK and in in the US. Uh, mm. Then in France or Portugal, for instance. Did anything mm -hmm. shock you when you mm -hmm. arrived in France for the first well, time? Well, what I I don't know if it shocked me, but I understood uh, straight away that I had to be fluent in French. <laughs> 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 so I I went to the Alliance Française and studied French because I was already uh, speaking. Uh, but uh, to get uh, to succeed in sales for uh, for uh, even international companies because I always work in mm -hmm. uh, American or Japanese companies. Um, and we need the French because I was in a sales role, so I need to talk with the customers. So I think it's important to speak the language. So I learned that French is important, even if I was fluent in English already. Um, and then there's different things, the kissing. I prefer the handshake. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, there's different, you know, the coffee breaks, uh, different. What I like uh, also is the champagne and the wine allowed oh. in the office, uh, not in the US or in UK. Mm. Uh, in UK a little bit, but uh, well, not Boris in the Johnson US. Had a few, if you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it depends who, which party you are. You. <laughs> 
uh, yeah, but there's definitely different things. And in uh, in organization, uh, I think uh, the the more in UK because I don't have uh, so much experience of working in US, but for US ma companies, but not in US. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, definitely in UK, in Ireland, um, I learned to you know being practical, see the numbers. If it's not right, you change. I mean, to do a change in the French team is completely different. It takes longer. There's a lot of debate. It's complicated. It's complicated. Yeah. We've yeah. always yeah. been there <laughs> doing that for 20 years. So yeah. how do we change? Why do we change? Right. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. So I think I'm more, you know, go, you know, change what is wrong. Go and look for what is better and go. Um, so I probably more similar <laughs> to uh, this mentality of uh, what mm -hmm. I can find in UK or in US. Mm -hmm. um, I share uh, Paula's view on, uh, mm -hmm. the, because when I was in Germany, I wasn't working for a German company per se. I was working for a UK group company. So oh. I, and uh, I covered 16 countries. Oh. Um, yeah. We may have, may have spoke about it. At the time I was working on um, perhaps the largest um, telephone infrastructure project in the world. Um, uh, and today we take it for, 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 for granted, you know, we have uh, mobile phones with internet. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it, it, there wasn't uh, that possibility with, with uh, the combination of landline and um, mm. mobile phone. And I had to deal with Portugal. I must say that Portugal was, the, was very cooperative. Um, and, and the Netherlands, the Germans, the Italians, British as well. Mm -hmm. um, Ireland, there's 60 countries, um, Turkey and Egypt. And um, it's quite interesting. Not all the national traits are, as you think, they are, as you said, you know, they're not uh, always stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I thought the Germans would be the most resistant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as long as you give them a logical answer yeah. and it made sense, then mm -hmm. um, you, you, you won them over. I'm not going to say who the most difficult was. <laughs> 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 Joe, actually, I want your take on this because as the author of French License, oh, yeah. um, a book that describes very well cross-cultural references between the US and France, uh, what is your take on the subject? Do you want to talk about your book a little bit to us? Uh, sure. Uh, actually, I, it started um, as a number of um, emails uh, that, uh, that I were sending around to, to people about, about my experiences uh, in France. Uh, and. Um, and then people said, you, sh you should write a book. But uh, for me, there wasn't any sort of like connection uh, be mm -hmm. be between them. And for, for me, a book has to have a beginning, middle, and an end. It has to have something that, uh, you know, feel conductor, as they say in, in French, uh, to, to that. And then, uh, then, I, then I thought about it. Oh, my God, it's taken me forever to get my French driver's license. Okay? So that became the, the theme that, that I would use to then, like, create a book um, uh, about the, this, so so I had a number of stories that I had already, you know, sort of shared with people, uh, but then I built that uh, around that uh, and, and to do it. And it's like you know, it's Kafka esque, you know, to, to go through uh, the administration and, and to try to do this because I had already had a license for 25 years uh, before uh, coming here, uh, but I couldn't uh, get a French one because there's no uh, reciprocal agreement between California and uh, France, but there is from Ethiopia. <laughs> you know, so if you if you're Ethiopian and it's a country that only has, or at the time when I was writing the book, uh, ten traffic lights, in the entire country. <laughs> okay, so, but if you have an Ethiopian license, you can just hand that over and they'll give you a, a, a French yes. uh, a driver license. Oh, like Whereas you. I had to go through the entire process like an 18 year old uh, here. Uh, from from beginning to uh, to end, and so it's it's just it's just comical, and so um, my suffering is uh, hopefully uh, um, <laughs> ma making people uh, laugh. Uh, so it's it's not necessarily like an instruction book. Here's how you do it, uh, but this is how I did it, and all the detours uh, and the wrong uh, uh, steps that that I took uh, to to get there. So. Uh, so hopefully, <laughs> this, uh, uh, it, it, had, it had a good ending for me because uh, it is, I, I finally felt uh, you know like hey I've accomplished something I've written my uh, my first book, um, and then I've you know gone on to write a, a you know second and I'm, I'm in the process of a, of a third, um, but uh, I think once you go over that first hurdle because a lot of people have an idea or they 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 want to turn that in, in, into a book, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of dedication to uh, uh, to to get there. I'm just saying you know. Um, keep on it. Uh, you you have a book in you, and uh, you know it, it can um, go all, all the way to to the end. Uh, and uh, I, I just feel really 
really proud to have uh, written one, and now I just I just want to do more. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you do blogs as well, and uh, mm -hmm. I was gonna ask all of you if you have a favorite French or or American expression because uh, Joe has a very funny uh, <laughs> <laughs> blog about the hierarchy of compliments uh, yeah. in France. Should, should, I, should I say mine? Yeah, yeah, please do. My, mine is that, uh, you know, which is, uh, I always found this uh, uh, surprising. Maybe a lot of expats um, um, experience this as well. But um, France is a very perfectionist uh, society. Mm. And so the... The hierarchy of, of compliments, uh, as, as it has in my, in my blog thing, the very, very top, top of the top that you can possibly get uh, from a French person or your boss or whoever is rien à dire, <laughs> which means like I have nothing to say. It means did I have you, nothing. Did you, did you see that blank expression on my face? Yeah, <laughs> I, I never heard it. You, you heard it? <laughs> well, you haven't gotten there yet. Exactly. <laughs> You need, to, you need yeah. to improve. I need That's to try harder. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So once you get to rien à dire, it means like I have nothing bad to say about what uh, what what you've uh, you've Gosh. done, and that that is that's the highest. You're mm, not, the highest you're not gonna get an boy. You're not gonna bad. get uh, you know. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Um, nothing can, negative, bad, bad, <laughs> no, bad negative. Yeah, I have nothing bad. No, I have nothing to say at all, oh, mm -hmm. negative or, or positive right, about right, that. Right. So so that's that's right, that's, right, a, wow. that's about the the, the top. So, wow. yeah, what, what are you guys' uh, favorite, uh, your French I don't know, uh, I'm still not used to have bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> when it's uh, 8 in the evening, bonjour. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. oops. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm still not used to this I'm one. A bit, I'm a bit confused. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, in my dark room playing the guitar, so in Bougival. When I do get out, I, I'm careful when to use excusez moi and pardon. Mm. Mm. But yeah. uh, you're 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 definitely the um, the expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so we have a little bit more time. We're gonna talk about COVID very quickly. Uh, like I said, it's been about two years now since uh, the lift of our, our first lockdown. Uh, since uh, the first case in France happened to be on the 24th of January 2020, nowadays 79% uh, of the population is uh, fully vaccinated. As of the 14th of March, the vaccine pass uh, was eliminated, and of the 16th of May, the masks. Uh, in the UK, the same rules apply, uh, vaccinated or not. Uh, however, in America, you still need a PCR, whether you're, you're vaccinated or not, to enter the country. Uh, how do we feel about COVID nowadays? Are we a bit worried? Are we, is it okay? Why do you think America is keeping these uh, a bit strict uh, measures now that Europe has relaxed a bit? Mm -hmm. um, if I don't need to travel, take the plane, I don't think about the mask at all. Mm -hmm. I, I avoid crowds, but um, mm -hmm. for me it's like, I, I'm happy that I don't need to wear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I need. I think we need to adapt. I think uh, it's not so um, so severe symptoms now. So I think we need to live with it. And now we have the monkeys. The monkey, monkey box. box. Monkey box okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we need to live mm. with uh, all these, uh, you know, virus. And uh, if it's not severe, and if uh, the hospitals are not suffering from that, I think we need to get to normal mm -hmm. if we can. Mm -hmm. mm, so okay. No, yeah, it's a, it's it's a long process, and uh, I think um, learning how to live with the virus now is is an option that mm -hmm. is. Uh, starting to become reality mm -hmm. and uh, it's good I think it's good that we're moving forward I I just wondered about America maybe uh, because the outbreaks uh, are happening maybe faster there but I definitely mm -hmm. think uh, it's good that we're moving forward yeah. with that I think Asia is suffering I don't know about yeah, North UK, Korea. Uh, US but uh, mm. South Korea Japan I think they are not uh, still uh, uh, I think the measures there are still st very strict to travel. Oh, yeah. I remember um, at the start, uh, you know, Portugal was kind of proud of itself. Hey, you know, we're, we're not so affected by, like the other countries. Mm -hmm. the, every country is going to have a, um, a, an outbreak and every um, you know, population is going to have to find some way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. it it's, it's very difficult. Um, I, I remember watching the Super Bowl mm -hmm. um, uh, when, before we came to, to, to France. And um, one of my friends worked for Emirates Airlines, and he said, do you know in China, the air hostess, uh, the, the cabin crew, are wearing hazmat suits. Oh, wow. that, that was, you know, what have been the 1st of February or something like that. This year? This year. Um, into 2020. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just okay. before. And despite that, 
they were still shipping a lot of people out and you know eventually to, to Italy. And uh, I think we need some common sense. When you go on the plane, everyone is coughing in your, well, before the pandemic, mm -hmm. coughing in your face. And um, there's never been any common sense about it. Mm -hmm. And crowded places and respecting people. In Britain, we respect distance, person, space, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. But when you, go, when you travel the world, this person, space thing takes out a different meaning. Mm -hmm. yes. um, mm -hmm. uh, our space. Uh, so I think there's got to be some growing up, mm -hmm. uh, especially with a population when I was a kid with three billion people and now heading towards eight billion people in my lifetime. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I agree with you. It's something we've got to live with. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to change our attitudes. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, living, going forward, you know, America, it's politics. You know? mm -hmm. I think. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going there soon, so oh, yeah. I'll, I'll have to get the PCR. And I, do you just comply? Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. But on top of complying, you know, you, you act in a certain way. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you wear your mask mm -hmm. when you're asked to. Yes. Definitely in the plane, I'll wear my mask. to others, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. Actually, Tony, we're just about to get to what you're doing this summer. Yes. So <laughs> the, uh, uh, we're running out of time. We're going to go on to our final subject. Uh, Fed de la Musique is approaching. 21st yes. of June marks the first day of summer. Uh, and we're going to have the best of having, uh, well, Joe and, and Tony here uh, to talk about jazz a little bit, well, Paula as well. Mm -hmm. um, Tony, you will be traveling this month in August to the States to spend so, a week with Frank Vignola, yeah. uh, a famous jazz player. That's, that's I'm not wonderful. I'm sure he's so famous in Europe. Oh, he, well, he's, he's Italian. Yeah. Um, yeah he certainly yeah. is well known in America. Um, uh, he, he, he came to fame, I suppose, playing with Les Paul. Um, uh, and and uh, Les Paul rated him as five of the most admired uh, guitarists in his life. Um, so it was a big compliment, mm -hmm. yeah. and he has a lot of Les Paul style in yeah. him. But he's um, essentially a jazz guitarist. Um, uh, Such as yourself. Sorry. Such as yourself. Well, if I could get close to Frank, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy. Um, uh, well, Fête de la Musique uh, um, next week is uh, the um, La Défense uh, Jazz Festival. Oh, yes. Um, uh, headlining with Herbie Hancock. Um, because of the pandemic, I didn't get out mm. a, a lot. And so I'm now getting into the jazz scene in France. And one magazine labeled France as one of the four top jazz cities in the world. Did you talk about that? Yeah. And um, I, I, I would tend to agree with them. I met, um, <coughs> excuse me, I met a guy called um, Larry Gillespie, mm -hmm. um, who toured with uh, Ray Charles and organized... Um, um, his his uh, concerts in, in Poland, but no, not to speak about in particular. You're meeting all sorts of people mm. in the jazz scene in France, and I'm not too sure if I was in New York, oh, or I, I would meet uh, um, so many people. I suppose you, you know when you travel as an expat, you sort of sort of congregate mm -hmm. in a certain way, and we seem to be congregating in in in, in jazz. Oh, for uh, sure. Yeah. May I ask you guys your favorite song, jazz song, French song, American song, off the top uh, of your head? Well, for me, um, I was like uh, born, well, not born, but I was raised in Concord, uh, California, in the North, Northern, Northern California. And I never knew growing up that Dave Brubeck uh, uh -huh. was uh, from, uh, from my, my hometown. I think it's just, yeah. it's, it's yeah, a pity. They should put a statue for him in the, in the, in the center of the, uh, of the town because the guy is just uh, amazing. So, um, so I, I think of uh, Take Five. I think everybody has heard Take Five and, and, and probably uh, loves it. Um, that's that's just a, a classic, uh, you know, jazz uh, song. Um, uh, my father grew up in the 1930s and 40s, so um, we had jazz in the household when I was growing up in the 60s, mm. amid Beatles and so on. And so a lot of a lot of Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I thought about this question, um, which my my favorite. And there's something called um, the Real Book, uh, which jazz musicians um, sort of. Not quite a Bible, but their, their reference book, right? You, you know, the real, the real book is, and there's so many versions of it. it it's a book that was developed by some students in Ber Berkeley, Berkeley uh, School, um, to sort of circumvent the expensive um, music, music um, uh, sheet music prices. Um, so it's hard to pick up your favorite, but of in course. French, um, uh, they, there is a song in in in, um, uh, in English called "I Wish You Love." Mm -hmm. And I, apparently it's a, it's a French song, mm -hmm. um, uh, meaning um, 
my, my past love or, or you know something about um, mor mourning about the love lost. And in, in English, it's uh, I wish you something good for the future. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. Sorry Tui, we're going to wrap up, Paula. Yes, uh, I don't have a favorite song. Um, I like jazz very much. I like classic music also. Mm -hmm. And um, I even start uh, having classes, piano classes, because I played when I was younger. And then now with the COVID, I thought it was a good time to restart. <laughs> so yes. I have a keyboard at home now. Oh, and I, I'm having <laughs> some piano uh, lessons now, so uh, but I don't have really a one that I like most. Yeah, it's very, diffi very difficult to pick <laughs> one. Yes. There's so, so many. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Joe. Thank, thank you, you, Paula. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, thank you Alex. Uh, I really think it's it's wonderful that TV Sosantisvit integrates uh, more English people onto the show, onto the platform, because uh, yeah, there are there are quite a bit in in this evening anyway. So we need to stick together. And uh, I hope till next time, but for the moment, 12373 edition uh, number three is over. <laughs> <laughs>